This is not the church of Emmanuel Christ, of Latter-day Saints, of Joseph Smith. This is the church of Jesus Christ. When we remove the Lord's name, Emmanuel, from the name of his church, we inadvertently remove him as the central focus of our worship and our lives. So plain and precious. Finally, the Book of Mormon is the keystone of Emmanuel. Just as the arch crumbles, if the keystone is removed, so does all the church fall with the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. The enemies of the church understand this clearly. Among the most common sexual sins, pregnancy and abortion, all ugly sins, but in and of themselves, their pernicious evils. Anyway, enjoy the pie. Drive is one good song. Two months. Two months left. So, in the scriptures, light, knowledge, truth, intelligence, wisdom, are often seen together in a context. What is not seen together is feelings. Nothing more than feelings. Feelings, therefore, are not connected to light, knowledge, truth, intelligence, or wisdom. Feelings are an emotional reaction, response to our interpretation of what we experience with the five senses in the physical realm. And thus, we can change our interpretation to change our feelings. This is how cult groups, religions, politicians, and other evil people are able to trick you, con you, deceive you, and cause harm to you, whether life, liberty, or property. And so it's important not to cave to your feelings with hasty generalizations, with ad hominem responses, because the scriptures warn us about this thing called a beam in a moat. It's where you make a false accusation against another person and thus expose your fault, which is exactly the same, but worse. So, Mormons, you read, ponder, pray, and you get the right feeling. Oops, you got deceived by the great and abominable church, because that's not in the Book of Mormon. No, it's not in Moroni. You didn't interpret it correctly. You used the wrong definitions for words, and you took out manifest. The physical five senses. And you didn't coordinate it with the other scriptures on the same topic. Alma, chapter 32, starting in verse 28. We will liken the word unto a seed. And it incorporates how feelings are a response. And so, therefore, you are not intelligent about Mormonism. You do not know Mormonism. You do not have the truth about Mormonism. You are not wise concerning Mormonism. You are just an emotional reactor to Mormonism, according to the interpretation that the prophets deceived you with. 
And likewise, those of you who were Mormon, but got the wrong feeling and left. You do. Did you study? No. You've got an emotional feeling response. And you left. You don't know Mormonism. You're not intelligent about Mormonism. You don't know the truth about Mormonism. You fell for the church's lies and deceptions. I studied Mormonism. I gained light, truth, knowledge, intelligence. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Therefore, I'm smarter than you concerning Mormonism. I am an authority on Mormonism because of the fruit of truth, knowledge, intelligence, wisdom, light that I obtained through my efforts, through my research, through my study. And so, thus, I have different feelings in response to this. And both of you don't like them because they're not your feelings. But you didn't study. And so, can you imagine if my children, whom I did not get to raise, were raised by their mother, are somehow finding out that I'm doing a YouTube channel and are watching my videos and because they did not do what I did and were not taught according to my knowledge they were taught by their mother that therefore they then think that I'm wrong that I'm incorrect that I'm not smart therefore not intelligent, not truthful. Yeah, that would be a sad day. But that's what would be the case. Because they were raised by their mother in the church. Therefore, they too are not knowledgeable, intelligent, truthful about Mormonism. Thus, they would be pulling a beam and a moat, claiming that I don't know what I'm talking about. And so, I used my study and research to decipher Paleo-Hebrew and found out that Joseph Smith is a translator, an actual scientific translator. And Mormons who haven't studied don't believe it. They can't believe it because it means the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been lying and deceiving them and are false because they're not translators. They even falsely accuse Joseph Smith of not being a translator and call him a revelator. That's how he rendered his translations by the gift and power of God. It was revelation, not translation. Stupid. And critics, likewise, were Mormon, believed the same lie, but then got the wrong feeling and left the church. Stupid. The manuals and the footnoting of the scriptures and the Bible dictionary, topical guide, guide to the scriptures and the 2009 Spanish edition to start off the foreign language versions. All of that was done by Mormons that the church considered smarter than the prophets. The prophets didn't work on those. They had no impact whatsoever on any of that except for the first run back in 1979 for the Bible and 1981 for the triple. That's when uh, Ballard and uh, Bruce R. McConkie were involved. 
Uh, Elder Scott was overseer of the revision in the 2000s, early 2000s, for the 2009 Spanish edition. And there was a member of the 70 that uh, was the go-between, the prophet and the, the supervisor of the priesthood uh, um, the correlation can't remember the name of it now <laughs> it's changed <clears throat> since then but uh, yeah it was the <clears throat> the organization that worked on the manuals for release society and priesthood and the magazines that uh, group that worked for the church in the church office building were the ones assigned to the scripture footnoting uh, thing that was ordered by the president of the church. And it's all assigned uh, Scott to be the overseer and then there was a member of the 70 that was the go-between. <clears throat> And so the supervisor is the one that's responsible for going out and finding Mormons who are intelligent to work on these. And for the 2001, he came to me. For the original one, 1979, 1981, they came to Avraham Gileadi and some others. And Avraham Gileadi was the one who put in the Hebrew footnotes in the Old Testament. And you'll notice that there are a number of IEs and ORs instead of a Hebrew, H-E-B. This was because the church disapproved of Avraham's suggested footnote for H-E-B. And thus Nelson gets up at the pulpit of conference and botches it because the church rejected Avraham Gileadi's translation of Israel. And so, <clears throat> I too recommended the translation for Israel. They came to me. because I'm intelligent, knowledgeable, truthful about Mormonism. That was my field. I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew, and I went on to decipher Egyptian. Learning of the Egyptians, language of the Egyptians, not learning of the Greeks, language of the Egyptians. That's the Rosetta Stone. That's what Egyptologists are using as their translation. Learning of the Greeks, language of the Egyptians, from the Rosetta Stone. They don't know Egyptian yet. None of them do. I do. I deciphered it, because I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. I did the research. I made the decipherment. I gained intelligence. I gained knowledge. I gained the truth. Through the scriptural process. And so the church recognized my abilities and uh, promoted me to the highest committee to work on the footnotes, to oversee the other work. And yet, despite that, they still rejected a lot of my recommendations and purposely kept me out of the foreign language for Biblical Hebrew, Greek, and I recommended Egyptian to them, and they still rejected that. Amazing, huh? Joseph Smith is true. Here it is. No. <laughs> God. So, yes. I am more intelligent than the prophets because knowledge, intelligence, wisdom, truth, light does not come instantly. 
just because you're in the mantle of the office it requires work and so we read in the scriptures from Joseph Smith talking about him and his magical supernatural powers that he gets instantly doesn't have to work for it talking about his office as the president of the church he has the keys of Moses not the keys of Peter oh you were told Peter is the president of the church's keys huh oops that's for the 12 apostles who are traveling 12 yeah what Brigham Young was in he has no authority to lead the church and yet you were lied to and because he has no authority it's not Joseph's church why are critics blaming Joseph when it's Brigham Young these are no does if you just studied rather than getting a feeling see Elijah Jesus Joseph Smith are very sarcastic when talking to their great and abominable church <laughs> I emulate them <laughs> it's fun to mock evil <laughs> and Mormons are pouting weeping and wailing and gnashing their teeth calling me the Antichrist, anti-Mormon Korahor inspired by Satan beam him out guys, beam him out and so as the president of the church he now has some gifts seer, revelator, translator, prophet so yes, you plug him into Nelson, Nelson botched the translation, even though he said he had to go to two Hebrew scholars at BYU who were the ones responsible for denying Avraham Gileadi's translation. <laughs> Nelson is not a translator. He doesn't have the gift. And if you listen to conferences, when we raise our right hand to the square and vote for the president <laughs> it's in verse 22 you don't vote when you're sustaining <sighs> when are you gonna learn this church isn't true they're lying about Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon but Travis Joseph Smith can't be a true prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. <laughs> it can't be true. We have to have our feelings validated. <sighs> and yet, what does it mean? It means Joseph Smith has to be a seer, revelator, translator, and prophet. And so critics jump all over this to show how he's not without having studied, without having intelligence, without having knowledge, without having wisdom. You heard somebody else who didn't have intelligence, who didn't study, who didn't gain knowledge, who didn't know the truth. And you felt good about what they said, trash-talking Joseph. And I have demonstrated all these years, all the times that Joseph Smith is a seer, is a revelator, is a translator, is a prophet, because we're now in the latter days that he was preparing us for. And he's right on target. And thus the Book of Mormon, right on target. It is a book of prophecy and revelation because it's now the latter days and they're all happening. It is not literal history. 
It is not Christian with Jesus. And so, yeah, if you're using that critics, of course the Book of Mormon is not true as Christian literal history Jesus interpretation. No duh. But you're not convincing Mormons to leave. Because Mormons have their feelings, and you need to validate them, or you're the Antichrist, anti-Mormon or inspired by Lucifer. <laughs> Dumbasses all. And so, yeah, did you not catch me? As a seer, revelator, prophet, translator. How the hell did I get these gifts? <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> but I got them. And I've shown the fruit. And Mormons deny the fruit only because of their feelings. And critics deny the fruit only because of their feelings. You're not using scientific processes of logical Socratic method methodology to develop theories, have them tested for three confirmations to establish facts. And even after I get three confirmations, I'm still going even though I've established the fact of my Paleo-Hebrew decipherment, I still test myself. It's what I do. But I'm confident, because I've already established it as a fact, that my test will involve a bombshell discovery. So that's why I loved it when Jasmine used to comment, asking questions from Scripture, is because I was fully confident that what I would find would be a bombshell when I checked the Hebrew. Sure enough. <sighs> line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. I can testify to this truth. Getting a feeling is not line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. You don't know Jack Diddley. And neither do I. I am. Who is he? <laughs> and so, Joseph Smith warns you. We're basically done with the video, in case you want to leave, if you haven't left already. This is just the first video of the day where I need to bathe and shave and have breakfast. I finished early. Oh, crap, now what do I do? <laughs> Joseph Smith gives us a warning. Us, right now. A warning for right now. He's quoting Acts, which is quoting Deuteronomy. And there's a reason why he does this. You have to check it. And he says that that Jewish Christ is our Christ. Because it's not Christian religion, thus not Jesus Christ of Christians. And he says the day had not yet come when they... Yeah, it's us, Joseph. Just say it's the Mormons in the future. You're prophesying... It's true. It happened. It's Mormons. Who would not hear the Christ's voice. So it's not Jesus, is it, Mormons? And critics. It's the learning of the Jews, Christ, that Joseph Smith says is Mormon. If you do not listen to him, you will be cut off. Did you check Acts? <laughs> From among the people. Did 
did you not recall that I told you the keys of Moses for the president of the church and that the president of the church has the gifts of prophet, seer, revelator, and translator we'll go to the Book of Mormon first before we drop the bomb you drop the bomb on me baby you drop the bomb on me theme song in the description below and I probably should write it down in case I forget which can happen dropped I could also do here comes the boom that's a fun one too but we'll do that drop the bomb 2nd Nephi, chapter 3. Oh no, it's the Book of Mormon. Quick, harden your hearts. <laughs> this is about the prophecy that's not literal history, which means it was a contemporary author when Joseph Smith was still alive saying that Joseph Smith is going to come in the future to establish the church. Restore it. <laughs> That's not the point of this passage. The point of this passage is about the Christ of Mormons, who is to come after Joseph Smith. That's why Joseph Smith used it used Acts to Deuteronomy in Joseph Smith History, verse 40, the second vision, an exact same pattern match to Lehi's second vision in the first chapter of the first book of the Book of Mormon. Right there at the beginning, where it says you're supposed to use the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. It does not say the learning of the Christians in the language of the Christians. Non-Trinitarian. Nope. Wrong religion. And so, yes, the Messiah should be made manifest, physical five senses, in the latter days to who Mormons after Joseph Smith this is your Christ Mormons you're supposed to be looking for him he's supposed to save you from the great and abominable church and in case you didn't catch it because you used feelings it's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's why Joseph Smith says Jesus is an abomination in Jesus' sight. <laughs> in the first vision, verse 19. Mm -hmm. So section 103, talking about the redemption of Zion in the latter days. Verse 15, now we go to 16. Therefore, I will raise up. Hey, that's that Deuteronomy passage of the Jews for the Jewish Christ to be a mortal human baby without supernatural magical powers. To have mortal parents, a father with seed. Somebody's apparently struggling to get out of their parking spot. unto my people. Oh, wow, Joseph is consistent with the Book of Mormon. Isn't that amazing? Mormons. A man who shall lead them like as Moses. Hey, the keys of the president of the church. And it's not Nelson, because he ain't got the gifts. We know him by his fruit. 
for Mormons are the children of Israel. Hey, he's helping us decode all of the scripture prophecies. So, yeah, those Jesus Gospels, it's not Jesus, it's the man like Moses. And Isaiah says his name is Emmanuel, sun god at noonday. Hey, that's the language of the Egyptians. Hmm. It's the one who comes to Lehi, it's the one who comes to Joseph Smith in both the first and the second vision. Sun above the, the light above the brightness of the sun at noonday. Emmanuel. <clears throat> and so the Jews are Mormons. The Pharisees, Caiaphas, the high priest, and even those Sadducees, Mormons of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Pharisees are the religion, Sadducees are the government, so it's Utah government, who are all Mormon. And the Pharisees are the state presidents and the others, and Caiaphas is Nelson right now. Hmm. Yep, that's how it works. You just replace the current known characters and liken them in the story, which the Book of Mormon tells you to do. And now you know the prophecies. Caiaphas will try to murder the Mormon Christ. Oh no! And so Moses. Yeah, well, that's exactly what the law of the Jews told you to do. To liken the Exodus for the future Christ. So Moses is the Mormon, who is the Mormon Christ. And so Pharaoh, hey, that's Nelson again. Playing with the big boys now. <laughs> and so yes, the Hebrews, the house of Israel, are Mormons. And they want to stay in Egypt. They're complaining. <laughs> they don't believe Moses. Go figure. Mormons fulfill prophecy yet again. So do it with the Book of Mormon now. Lehi. Hey, he's the Mormon Christ. And he has a first and a second vision, just like Joseph Smith. Yes, you can do it with Joseph's visionary 1838 account. Exactly the same pattern. And so he goes to the Jews, and the Jews want to murder him. They don't believe, they don't want to listen, and they die. They got cut off precisely as it stands in our New Testament. Just like those Egyptians, house of Israel, who did not go with Moses. Just like the Jews during Jesus' time. Because, spoiler alert, 72 AD CE, the Romans destroyed the Jews in the Jerusalem temple. And the author already knew that because he wrote about it after that. So he purposely left that ending out, letting you know that you already know the ending. So when Jesus in the Gospel of John is talking to his wife Mary and says, don't have sex with me yet, Mary. We have not been coronated and sealed in the Zion Temple yet. In two months. 8 April 2024. Yeah, he gave us the day and the hour of the prediction. Because prophecy is predicting the future. Revelation is revealing the day and the hour. And so some dumbass... In Matthew 24 and 25, thought it would be funny 
to deceive people by saying no man knows the day or the hour which the author of Matthew put all over the place. So, mm-hmm, isn't this fun? <laughs> there are people who have left. I know that for a fact. Mormons refuse to learn and are making excuses. We don't like your attitude, your tone. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> so that they can justify their feelings and not believe. So, I really hope you can find your Christ, Mormons. I hope you humble yourself before you're compelled to be humble. Likewise, you too, critics. It's not enough to spiritually leave the church. You also have to flee the land of Babylon. Yeah, I used code, didn't I? Two months to the day. That's when they chose to do it. Not God, not the prophets, not me, the enemy. That's when they chose a 9 11 event that Joseph Smith refers to from the Bible as the day that shall burn as an oven, and they that come shall burn them. That's what Joseph Smith added. And so it's not God, it is not Joseph Smith, it is not me, it is they that come are going to use this date to do it. Now they can fail. <laughs> they can totally botch it. But the Judas price has already been paid with your tithing money, by the way. Just like Judas did just like Judah did. <laughs> See the patterns? It's all about you, Mormons. Isn't that great? Scriptures are so true. Alrighty. It's not long enough. <laughs> Hope you can find your Christ. Hope you listen to him. Hope you can save your life. And quit making excuses.